I want to bring in a very special guest, Bob Dahl with Nuveen Asset Management. He oversees more than a hundred billion dollars worth of investable money. Bob Dahl, welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Good morning, Stuart. I'm saying that the panic phase right after the British vote, the panic phase is over. Too soon to say it's plain sailing, here we go, nice rebound. But I am saying panic over. And you say? I don't disagree with that at all. We, we, we did have a panic in part because, remember, virtually everybody expected Brexit to fail. So you had that huge rally Monday to Thursday, especially in the pound and in London. So, you know, the Friday decline didn't even give back what Monday through Thursday gained. So uh, a lot of the panic was, oh, my goodness, it went the wrong way, quote, unquote. Yes, we're repairing now. We're having a bounce. And uh, look, the truth somewhere in between. We're not going to know for some time what Brexit really looks like or really means. Okay. And I think we're all going to speculate over and over, but it's going to take months before we really know, and uh, we may not know quite then. Okay, look, in, in my opinion, the biggest threat is not so much the British leaving the European Union. I think the biggest threat to the global economy and the global financial system is the breakup of the European Union. And if I hear that, for example, the Dutch are going to hold a referendum of their own and they might get out, or the French will hold a referendum and they might get out. That to me would be a much bigger negative for our market here than anything to do with the British vote. I agree with that. Now remember, a government has to take the referendum to the people. Uh, the, the, the British uh, government is getting some criticism. Why did they bother to take it to the citizenry in the first place? Did they really know what they were doing? They thought they had it in the bag. So I think uh, other governments will be reluctant to move it to a referendum, Stuart. Seems to me that a lot of the money that's uh, going back into the market now is going back in not just to the banks, but especially into the big name technology companies. The theory being, I guess, that they will be less affected by any negatives in the future. What do you say to that? Yeah, I, I agree. Many, many of those companies uh, do some business in, in Europe and the UK, but uh, many don't as well and have phenomenal free cash flow. I think a lot of investors are saying slow growth, uncertain world. What are the things that are going to make stocks work? And one answer that I think is free cash flow. If I have free cash flow, I can hire a worker. I can expand my business. I can buy back my stock. I can raise my dividend. If I don't have free cash flow, I've got one head time I have my back. And of the 10 sectors in the market, tech is number one with nobody a close <laughs> second when it comes to free cash flow. That's part of the reason I think tech is doing well. You I would also say the U.S. consumer as uh, you've been reporting, is doing pretty well also and is somewhat insulated from all the noise across the pond. Real fast, Bob, I read your stuff. After all, you manage $100 billion. I read your stuff and I, take, I, I, I read it. You say that Hillary would be better for the market than Trump. You've got 10 seconds to uh, make your case. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the reason is uh, with Hillary, we know what we're getting. With Donald Trump, we have no clue. And what it seems like we'll get is trade wars. Markets hate trade wars. He's got four months to clarify what he really wants to do and we could change our mind, but at the moment that's the stance. All right, Bob Dahl, hundred billion dollar man. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. As always, Bob. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.